Thomas here with Munch Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today we are doing something from the Darksiders series. Um, I've not made anything from it before and I was trying to look at all the images and characters and things like that within the game and try and make something that was iconic to begin with and I kind of feel like there's nothing more iconic to Darksiders than the Death Mask. Uh, in the video game it is you are one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and one of those characters is death and he looks pretty ridiculous so i am going to attempt to make the death mask from darksiders and to put it out for you in the description let's get to building I've had a lot of questions recently about how I make my patterns, so I thought I would just show you a little bit of the process. I find images to use as a reference. Sketchfab is a website slash app that I use sometimes that has 3D models. I build up the shape using foil and tape it to a mannequin head, adding parts until I'm happy with the shape. Once it's close enough, I cover the build with plastic grocery bag and then put duct tape over the top of that. This will be my pattern that I cut out, so I want to make it as tight to the form as possible. Now I'm drawing my seam lines. These are spots where structures come to a point. I also use the reference material to help get proper outlines. It's not a perfect process, but it will get me in the general ballpark of my object. I also put marks where parts meet other pieces to make registration marks for lining up later. I only template half because it's mirrored on the other side. I then transfer the flimsy duct tape to some poster board to give my template some rigidity. This is what you see on my downloadable templates. I literally tape these poster board pieces to a regular piece of copy paper and scan them into my computer. It's at this point I figure out what edges need angle cuts, what size foam I'm going to use, and if a part needs to be cut in half to fit on a page. I try and name them facial positions so that it makes it as clear as possible. Thank you. 
secure how the parts sort of line up with each other, or at least as close as I could get them laying flat. Then I start tracing onto the material. What is marked on the parts are what sizes of foam I use. Lots of people ask, well, if I use a different size foam, is it still gonna be okay? The answer to that is I, I don't really know. I use this specific size and I didn't try it in other thicknesses, so your guess is as good as mine. To keep my angle cuts clear as I'm cutting out parts, I keep the template pieces handy. When I move on to a new piece, I find that part on the corresponding template piece and look for the highlighted areas. The cover page of my template seems to be ignored a lot of times and leads to a lot of questions that have already been answered. Uh, most marks are explained on that front page. For assembly, I glue up one half at a time. If I glue up all the pieces at once, by the time I get to the other side, my contact cement would have sat for too long. Also, people say that they wish I would slow down builds so they could follow along easier. My videos would be hours long and take half a day for me to upload. You can slow down the video by clicking on the settings gear on the screen and changing it from normal to half speed or quarter speed. Now to join the halves. I waited to put the nose on because it overlaps the mouth. I glue up the middle using my reference marks to help me keep everything straight.
There are lots of little line details and holes in this skull mask, so I used some various stone bits on my rotary tool and marked up the surface. All these detailings will be rewarded when we go to dry brush it later. I seal the foam up with my heat gun and add a little bit of bending in places to give it just a little bit more form. Two coats of Plasti Dip. Sharpie bleeds through white, so that's why I'm using gray here. Paint time. I'm using some Plat FX paint to cover my mask. Start by pushing in some black into all the cracks and wiping off the high points. I use my heat gun on its cool setting to speed up the dry time. Then I go in, layer up off white and brown colors until I reach the desired tones. Because I'm dry brushing, I don't really need a lot of paint on my plate. I got these glass eyes on Amazon, I'll link them down on my affiliates page. My thought is to glue them in the middle, put this white sheer material behind it, and be able to see through the corners of the eyes. Because I set the eyes kind of far apart, it worked out pretty well. I also went ahead and added some black mesh behind the nose so you can see my nose behind it. Makes the mask a lot more breathable. And then the last thing is just to add the one inch elastic banding so you can secure it to your head. I also use some four millimeter EVA as a reinforcing to the elastic.
and we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, not too bad. I, I do want to point out a couple of things. I did use Plaid FX paints. Uh, they do a great job of dry brushing. They get a lot of coverage on them, and it, it really does kind of make the job easy, especially because it's a little flexible, so that means less wrinkling of your paints and chipping off or any of that stuff. So I definitely like the way that turned out. The eyes, I've seen a lot of other people try and make this mask before, and instead of putting the eyes inset into it, they just wore contacts and stuff like that. That's definitely an easy approach to doing it, uh, but it may be a little bit more expensive to get those specialized contacts and all that stuff, but I thought this was a simple approach to it, and it's kind of visible through the, the mesh on the sides. You do limit your peripheral vision when you got those big circles blocking right there at the corner of your eyes, so... Maybe you'll try and make one of these masks yourself and impress your friends with your ability to make a death mask and bring about the apocalypse. Hopefully not. Maybe you'll get some... Yay! And inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them much props. I do have a black wig, but why bother? I don't want to mess up my hair. Peace